comic book people. It's Wednesday. That means it's comic book day. Let's see what I got. First up is Power Man and Iron Fist, issue number four. This issue concludes the first storyline that brings back Jenny Royce, who was the receptionist for the Heroes for Hire, which is what Luke Cage and Iron Fist used to do. She was wrongfully put in jail because she was possessed by a supervillain, and she blamed both Luke Cage and Iron Fist for this happening. Big battle took place. Everything seems to be resolved at this point, and officially Iron Fist and Luke Cage are teaming up once again, even though Luke Cage has has been kind of hesitant about this, particularly because his wife, Jessica Jones, has been telling him he cannot do it. But we knew that they were going to officially team up, otherwise there wouldn't be a series. Aquaman number 52. To be honest, this was really just a filler issue to tie up some loose ends before the rebirth takes place. It's not a bad issue in any way whatsoever. We get to see how badass Aquaman is. Same thing with Mera, aka Aquawoman, or whatever she's going to be called now. So we do get to see them go full out. But it's obvious that the issue number 52 is for all of the DC comics is pretty much the end before the rebirth is going to be taking place next week. Which brings us to Superman Wonder Woman issue number 29. This is the final days of Superman. He's dying from a disease from all the battles and everything that's taken place in the past couple of years. And this issue has Superman and Wonder Woman battling a fake Superman. And it's the big battle before the final issue which is going to be Superman issue number 52 which comes out next week. Titans Hunt number 8. This is the final issue for this storyline before the title is going to be renamed into just Titans. This was a pretty good storyline, even though DC had messed up some of the continuity with the New 52 and explaining that there was a Teen Titans before the current Teen Titans that existed, they do go into some background as to why everyone forgot that they existed. Does that make sense? I know the New 52 universe has gone back and forth where at the very beginning they made it clear that there was a previous Teen Titans team that existed and then later on there was none that previously existed and this is saying that they did exist, it's just that their memories were all erased. We'll just leave it as is and hope that the rebirth is going to fix any problems that they may be having, including a question that was raised at the very end of this issue being that where is the 10th member of their team, meaning there is a possible another Teen Titan out there that they haven't found yet. Finally, I got Spider-Man issue number four. This is the Miles Morales Spider-Man. There's a new mutant going to the same school as Miles Morales and his best friend Genki. He's a mutant slash former X-Man by the name of Gold Balls. <laughs> Gold Balls. <laughs> And Spider-Man's best friend, Genki, has a huge infatuation with him. They're not explaining why exactly. They are hinting at the idea that he's just infatuated with him because they have similar body types, also because he may be a hero to him, or there may be something else underlying everything. There's been a lot of rumors that Genki could possibly be bisexual or gay, but they're not coming right out and saying it. It could be a superhero thing. It could be just a heterosexual crush. I don't know. I mean, right now, they're just kind of leaving it up in the air, which sometimes I like that. Other times, I get irritated for them not to just come out and say. I think it'd be great if Genki did come out as being gay. For starters, he's fairly a new character that hasn't been developed too much and people out there who get upset that established characters who have always been heterosexual are now coming out as being gay won't be an issue for them. Although I'm sure there will be conservative people out there that will still be upset regardless of that fact. Plus it's also great to show that he's Asian and he has a large body. He's not super muscular like almost every other character in every comic book ever created. And the diversity in that I think would be great. But we don't know yet. At this point it could be really anything. For all we know he just may have a heterosexual thing going for gold balls. Spider-Man himself really takes a back seat in the story until the very end where as the cover suggests Hammerhead has come back into town and of course he's going to be running into the new Spider-Man. Although I don't think he's ever been out of town I just don't think he's been used for a little bit. That's my comment below for this week. What'd you guys get? Leave comments down below and let me know. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me in this video. Be sure to check out my Patreon site, my social media sites, my websites, and everything else out there. Peace, love, namaste, and I'll see you guys Later. Peace. Just for your own knowledge, Fabio Medina is the real name for gold balls. He has the mutant ability to create balls of gold to use as either defense or offense. I'm not loving the name gold balls. I think they could have come up with something much better, like maybe shooter or projectile or baller. No, that's stupid. Golder? No, that's actually dumb too. But there's a lot of other names they could have come up with.